artistic vision. You know, that's that's a that's a fabulous question. And actually, um, I think artistic vision is uh, is something we we need to be working on um, from from day one. We always have a limited amount of. We we are we are all all limited, right? We are all flawed. We are all we all have our um, uh, our. our yeah, our, our our flaws, right? So so the so the idea that like at a certain point we're going to accrue all of this information and we're going to be able to shuffle through it and now we've come up with something fantastic is I think a lie. Um, we are always going to be imperfect with it, and yet we always have to have core principles. We always need to be adding to our sense of what is true and what is right in music. So, um, so artistic vision, I think, first and foremost, does come from these internal wells, right, of um, and things which really, really are important to you. What are the elements of music that are important to you, right? So that, that's what I urge you to do in terms of figuring out an artistic vision. Figure out what's important to you. Um, artistic vision. Um, uh, it, it took me a while to kind of uh, grab, and not because I didn't want to, but um, sometimes the, the the nature in which uh, the audition trail can turn you into, uh, sometimes that can crush one's artistic vision, um, if, if you allow it to, um, um, because there, there are parameters, um, but there's a lot of space within those parameters, right? Um, they always say, no matter how small the box is, there's still infinity within the box. Uh, but the one thing that led me to artistic vision is, you know, the aesthetics which uh, rang, rang true to me. Like I would uh, listen to my favorite singers or, or listen to my favorite oboe players, violinists, whatever, and help that develop, you know, something that I would like to grab onto. Then also, uh, what you grew up in, like your experience personally. And I, I really truly believe in this. Like, um, like I grew up in gospel church and I grew up, you know, very expressive culture and, and hip hop and, and jazz. And we would go to the local symphony. So, and, and spoken word poetry. I mean, all those things are things that I like to channel into my artistry. So that informs the music. So there isn't, one way of course you're playing within the style there's a style here but you still have your own spin on it right so you still have your own voice with it but i do think that it, it the merging of an artistic vision with an instrument i think is coming to terms with the concept that you want to hear that's informed from what the information you've taken in and also the experience you had which shapes the artistic vision so it's not just a one it's not the thing that you pick up when you play the oboe now you are an artist before you pick up the oboe. Even if you say, I'm quitting oboe today, you can have an artistic vision playing something else or doing something else. So artistic vision isn't just singular to what you're playing, but since we're talking about oboe, let all those things inform your concept, right? And of course, when it comes to the technical things, like I like this person's tone, I like how layered it is, I like how folks it is, I like how compact it is. You know, those type of like physical aesthetics, right, that you can pick up with, but as far as how you vocalize the speed of your vibrato or, or whatever, the, the, the depth or wherever, the pacing of your music, however you want to put it, let that be informed from a place that you find that you find valuable. And like Frank said, no, find out what's valuable to you, find out what's true to you. And then that shows the conviction that you have. And the most conviction that you have comes from who you are as a person. So really, really lean on those convictions because no one else can give you those convictions.